All right, getting into our next guest. Kareem Hard Hitter <laughs> Mayfield. What's going on? It's Kareem Hard Hitter Mayfield, WWE's best wrestler in the world. <laughs> 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 hey. Hey, right off, hey, right, 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 hey, well, I don't forget uh, the validity and getting clarity out of that because obviously um, it was a, you know, his trainer lied about, even lied about it, me being there. So I'm glad that you cleared it that I was there. So that was a good look. Um, as in for uh, wrestling, hey, man, it's a part of my style, man. It's got me, uh, it's got me 18 victories, man. I've never had points taken for, for holding, if you want to call it wrestling. I call, we call it pit bullying. But uh, nevertheless, um, I mean, I'm glad you got the clarity out of that. You know, there's there's so many videos about it and interviews, and you basically saying you beat him up. Won't you let our listeners know what exactly took place there from your account? Because as as Tim made it clear, it was just practice. So what happened on on your side? Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm not, not the one that's going to try to be like, oh, yeah, well, you know, trying to get fame off this one sparring session. I And I do understand that, uh, you know, we do send fresh guys in there. Some days you have good days, some days you have bad days. Well, that day I just happened to be in town and it was this bad day. I mean, he had, um, he had, um, actually, but that day I was the only sparring partner there at that point. At, um, and he was, I guess it was his last week getting ready for Nate Campbell. And um, they said, you want to get some work in with the champ? I was uh, definitely, I obliged and, I was ready to do my thing, man. So I got in there and, uh, you know, just start pit bulling. He's a pit bull too, but I guess I had a little more better pit bull tactics than him, man. Nevertheless, um, I know I did well. They wanted um, uh, uh, like four or five rounds. They took me out in two, man. And uh, his dad was yelling at him because of what he was allowing me to do to him. You know, and it wasn't, he didn't, you know, like I said, he said, he, he said, like, he said, hey, he yelled. He was like, what are you doing? And I stepped back. I'm like, I'm fighting. I didn't want to say I'm boxing because I wasn't boxing. I was like literally fighting. It was like a, I was down in the street fighting him. You know what I mean? Um, nevertheless, uh, his, uh, his, he, he was like, no, not you. I'm talking to him, I'm talking to Bradley. Like, why are you letting him do this to you? You know what I mean? But nevertheless, man, like he said, it was a sparring session. Some days you have good days and some days you have bad days. But that was a good day for me. And, uh, hey, uh, with me, only I think at that time I probably only had 10 professional fights. I mean, I was working with the champion. I, that was a great look for myself. Now, speaking of being a pit bull and things like that, I mean, in this fight with Thomas DeLorme, you have to be everything that you say you are. All the, I mean, because there's thousands of interviews with you. You've been calling everybody out. I mean, the Danny Garcias, the Tim Bradleys, everybody. There's not a name you haven't mentioned. There's not a name you haven't sparred with. But fighters get categorized as sparring partners or sparring partner mentality. You must defeat Thomas DeLorme in the same fashion that Carlos Abregu did on the main event of your card with Mauricio Herrera, or in better fashion, you do understand that, right? Certainly. I mean, nowadays, um, it's just not about winning, man. You know, for you know, it used to be with the uh, promoters being able to say, um, well, you know, we want to see this fight on um, on network. We want to see that fight on network television. Now it's really the, the networks that's saying who they want to see. So not only can you just win, you have to look and um, it got to be in great fashion. It can't be the, some old wrestling fest to where, where the fans are booing. It can't be holding. It can't be illegal things going on. I mean, you have to look good, and it got to be good sportsmanship. So with that being said, I definitely um, will win with, in great fashion. Hey, Kareem, I just have a few quick questions for you. I'm, I'm, I'm interested in, you, you beat Mar, uh, Mauricio Herrera, um, and it was a great fight, let's, let's be honest, but you've been calling out all these people, Danny Garcia, you've been calling out, you know, like you said, uh, Tim Bradley, everyone. So I'm, I'm essentially wanting to know, how do you feel that Mauricio Herrera is now getting a title shot? Although it's on the other side of the pond because of the Cold War, you might not be able to get there. How does it make you feel that a fighter that you beat is now in the position that you want to be in? I mean, well, um, 
overall, it just shows you that, you know, it's uh, politics in the game. Not politics, but politics. I mean, you be like, you want to, you actually need to, people need to go look and see who was actually the mandatory. And I'm sure it wasn't me, Mauricio or Herrera. I mean, it's like, damn, wait, shouldn't he be finding a mandatory or shouldn't he be finding a guy that was the number one guy or shouldn't he be finding another champion? And, um, you know, it just shows that it's uh, it's all about politics. And, you know, um, with, you know, it, it's just funny that they chose some of my, <laughs> some of some work that I, I end up, um, um uh, beating on. You know, nowadays you have people that does, that don't, there's like no real funks or no real feuds in the game anymore. Like, you know, you don't hear people doing the things that Ali and um, so uh, guys that spoke you know, or just uh, that were very vocal, you know, in the media about calling people out. You don't hear that no more. It's really just a promoter fighting. But nevertheless, you know, I mean, that's hey, I, um, that was, I had the opportunity to call out Gar- Garcia, and I did it. You know, and I'm, I'm vocal. I don't, I don't talk mess like that. Only when it's talking to me, then I, you know, I back it up, and also, um, I, I can talk, I can talk some real shit. You know what I mean? But nevertheless, um, you know, and going back to your question, man, it just, uh, it just looked kind of crappy, you know, for them to go over to Mauricio Herrera. Not saying that I, I, I expect to him to fight another world beater after. If you want to say he was taking a um, a light fight, you can say that. But uh, Mauricio Herrera is not a pushover, but uh, he is a light puncher. So with that being said, yeah, um, I just thought it was kind of crappy. So now with you, um, I guess on the top rank side, the 140 division is a lot more prevalent over on the Golden Boy side. But right now you basically, in your division right now, the top of the top is Ruzan Profotnikov. Obviously Herrera beat him. But I'm more th- I'm more interested in uh, right above you in the class above you, you have a lot more stars. You have a lot more money to be earned there. How long do you plan to stay at 140? And if, there, if obviously the right fight comes, are you willing to move up to 147 to fight? Uh, yeah, well, as you said, it's a lot of fights at 140 and also 147. Uh, but, uh, I mean, if you look at my career, actually um, more than half of my fights was actually at 147. I actually fought as high as, if I'm not mistaken, 154 against, um, uh, gosh, what's the dude name? Um I can't think of his name offhand, but I'm, I, gave him, I fought him twice. But it was like at 154, so I fought that high before, and I fought at 147. It was just an opportunity for the NABO title was uh, presented to me. And um, I had did a camp one time where I just really got in, like, beast mode shape, best shape of my life, and I, I had hit, like, 44 um, without even, like, doing any dry outs or anything. So I'm like, hey, I can do this 140 thing. So I chose to fight at 140 at this time. But as you said, um, you know, if the right opportunity presents itself at 147, I definitely will fight at 147 pounds. All right. I'm going to pass you to one of my other co-hosts. Will. Now, Kareem, you've been working with Virgil Hunter. I just want to know, what does he bring to the table? How has he developed you as a fighter? Do you look at yourself more as not just a hard hitter but – a guy that has skills to go along with that hard punch. Uh, well, um, uh, for one thing he brings to, he brings to the table is uh, world class work. You know, they've been in there with the Angulos, Amir Khan, um, um, Andre Ward, um, Andre Berto. You know, just being in there around world class guys, Antonio Johnson. Um, he's been new in camp. Got a new new Russian guy that fought very similar, like uh, Panovikov. Actually, um, you know, just that's one thing that it brings to the table is world-class sparring. You know, you don't have to travel or you don't have to fly guys in. And you got guys at different weights and different speeds and different um, styles. So um, with that being said, um, um, he, I think he feel, he brings um, uh, a good uh, – uh, he shows you a reason for, for uh, why he does things. It's not just – He's just not saying, well, um, you know, go out there next round and do a left hand right hook and, uh, you know, something like that. It's a reasons for why you're doing it. You know what I mean? It's, it may be setting up something else to, um, um, to uh, for, for the next round, or maybe setting up something up for the next punch. You know, it's a difference between um, you got trainers and you got coaches, and I feel he's a trainer and a coach. Now, as was mentioned earlier with Top Rank, what is the plan? What is top rank laid out for you? As they said to you, hey, we're going to you know, give you such and such amount of fights, and then we want you to go for the world title at this particular time. What do they have in store for you? Well, you know, actually, that's a good question because um, before this fight, I wasn't sure what the hell they had going on for me. You know, I'm like, I was actually in limbo because, you know, I'm like, well, um, you know, me having a, um, at that time, I was uh, number two in the world, WBO, and number five in the WBA. And um, going back to, uh, Timothy, what Timothy said, yes, um, that would consider me in the top ten, yes. Anyhow, um, 
I was very confused that you know that um, that my ranking would uh, they would allow my rankings to drop down. You know, I should I would have still I should have been fighting for one of those titles. But um, as for now, things are looking well, and you know, um, just me moving forward. As I said earlier before, that you know, it's pretty much the um, uh, networks that's kind of making the fights nowadays. So I feel once I shine out on this fight, that uh, I'll be looking to fight for a world title in the next fight or two. Okay, so. I want to ask you one last question before I, I pass you on to Vic. You said you wanted to fight for a world title. If it was up to Kareem Mayfield, who would you fight next if it was solely up to you? If it was solely up to me, um, I would fight Danny. I mean, the, uh, like a lot of Bay Area folks that I just run into, and a lot of people, you know, that I run to, period, you know, that that, um, that press conference um, frenzy that I called um, out there at the Mayweather Conference, it caused a, a, a stirred up a lot of waters and, um, now this when I see people when I as I see people they say, Well Mayfield when 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 they go give you the Danny fight, you know, and that's all people say to me. So I like to give the fans what they um what they've been looking for, you know what I mean? And we had a lot of uh, uh celebrities uh uh tweet uh retweet and retweet um the tweets that was going out and um, you know, it's just I mean, even they wanna see the fight. So with that being said I would I like to fight a Danny Garcia, especially after seeing um how he handles um Mauricio Herrera. Great, great. I'd like to see that too. Hey, Kareem, I was just wondering if you uh, have seen any video on Thomas Delorme, and what do you think of him as a fighter? Obviously, he's coming up to you in uh, three, three or four weeks now. I mean, what do you think, and what do you see that he might cause problems for you? Um, well, I see. Um, well, he has speed and he has power. Uh, he switches up, you know. Uh, but um, I don't know. I don't want to say what cause problems to me, you know, because. Um, I feel that, I mean, anything is possible in the ring, you know, anything can happen in the ring, but um, I just choose to stay ready. But for the most part, I mean, you got a guy that that can be slow and that punches. I mean, you see guys that get knocked out by a guy with a little punch, you know. So for the most part, in the ring, I mean, you're in the theater of the unknown, so um, um, anything is possible. But um, nevertheless, I just uh, see my hand being raised in victory at the end of this fight for the most part. And like I said, he has he's definitely a sharp fighter. He's fast. He's um he's um he switches from South Paul to Orthodox. And um uh, I mean he's a pretty good fighter. So um you know, I, I haven't seen um I looked at a couple a couple of tapes on, on YouTube but it's not too much that's saying, you know, too much. So I try not to get uh, bothered, I try not to be uh involved in just staring at who um who he uh, who he fought or what he did or you know or his highlights or anything like that. So, um, but what I did see that uh, every time the uh, excuse me, not the moment, every time that um, a break who caught him, it looked like he was on Queer Street, you know. And um, so um, certainly I'm looking to um, touch that chin. Now, that fight was at 147, I think, with a break. This one's gonna be at 140. He claims that you know it was the weight change. And he thinks he thinks that he's pretty strong at 140, uh, but I don't think he's faced a level of opposition at 140 compared to Kareem Mayfield. I mean, I don't know if you looked at his last fights. I mean, he does have some good power, but I, I guess what I'm trying to say, I think this, this might be a, a level above him. What do you think about that? I surely do. Um, you know, he's he's fought at, if I'm not mistaken, um, uh, maybe he did get to one, but um, I, I don't think that he even got to 140 in person. Like, well, he got to 141, and man, a lot of times that one pound makes a whole lot of difference, you know. Um, um, you know, and um, I don't I definitely don't think he's fought a level of opposition. I did see one fight um, of a guy, and um, I seen that the problem was called he actually won every round, which is funny. Person would be like, well, how did he give him problems? There were spots, there were certain spots that gave this guy problems, and I think that my style, I'm able to um, mimic. Uh, a certain style, you know, I'm not just like this brawler. They may think, oh, well, we have guys in camp that's going to continue to just move forward, and we got guys that's just fully, and, I, you know, that's not my my style at all that like that. If you look at me against um, Patrick Lopez, um, I had to box him because he was the bully. He was the one that was, so I had to become uh, the matador, El Matador, so I had to do my matador thing, and I had to show my legs and show my versatility. But with that being said, um, yeah, I'll definitely feel that he's fought the level of opposition at my level. And, and you know, my style is certainly hard to uh, train against. And um, he'll see that uh, come March 29th. 
Oh, and that was uh, Francisco. It just came to my head. Francisco Santana is who I fought at 154. Gotcha. Now, you got a world-class trainer in your corner. Uh, he just got with another world-class trainer. I guess Robert Garcia has done some nice things with guys that have come into his camp, Marcos Maidana being one of them. Do you see Robert Garcia changing anything in Thomas Delorme? And being that, I guess this might be their first fight together. I mean, doesn't that play into your advantage? You know, I don't, um, I don't actually see them wanting to fight change too much about the Loma. He's pretty well rounded. You know what I mean? Um, and they want to have him, you know, doing maybe a few different things different. But honestly, I feel with a style like that, um, I don't see how much more would be able to change. You know, he's pretty well rounded. I think he's actually reached his peak um, on style wise. So. For the most part, I don't see how much more that uh, Robert Garcia can offer to him besides motivating him to get off the canvas. Now, Top Rank has uh, signed some 148-pound guys. Khabib, they signed Jesse Vargas, they signed you. Um, how do you feel about Jesse Vargas getting a title shot before you being he hasn't fought anybody since being on their stable? Or do you think it's more like they're trying to groom you more and they're just trying to see what Jesse has at this point in his career? Yeah, that was actually weird to me also. You know, I'm like, okay, um, Vargas is at 47 now. He's fighting at 40 for Khabib, you know, Khabib, because even Khabib, uh, I've already had mentioned that, oh, yeah, I think the next fight would be against Mayfield. Like, he even put that out on one of the boxing websites. So for him to move down and get the title, you know, shot, um, that was very weird to me, very strange. But, you know, I've actually, um, for my last fight, I only worked with uh, Jesse Vargas for this fight. So, um, I mean, hey, after maybe after he wins this fight, that's definitely a doable fight for me um, at 140 pounds. I'm not sure how well or how strong he'll be at 140. Um, I know I was doing well and strong with him and um, at me fighting at 40 and him fighting at 147 pounds. But um, nevertheless, that could be a good fight for me. But I do see him beating um, Alex Verde and whenever they got a fight coming up. Now, if you don't get that fight, obviously if you win this fight on March 29th, Thomas Delorme has said he wanted to fight Ruslan Provodnikov if he won this fight. Provodnikov isn't returning until June 14th, I guess, was the rumor. Could you turn around from March 29th and take on a fight with Ruslan Provodnikov for that 140 belt? Um, I certainly can. Um, uh, but, you know, I just read a um, a um, an interview a friend of mine said to me um, and uh, that, uh, that he sent to me. And it uh, had, um, it had Penova cost. Uh, coach on there, uh, excuse me, Penova Cost uh, manager on there, and they do out a few uh, questions. Then they do out the question: Well, Mayfield is 147 pounds, he's 18 and 0. Um, well, what are the um, what is the likelihood of possibly fighting Mayfield? And um, uh, and I quote: He stated that um, you know we've seen Mayfield. Excuse me, um, uh, we we did actually consider Mayfield, but Freddie Roach, his coach. Um, have seen Mayfield in sparring against Manny Pacquiao, and he has his reasons of why he wouldn't want to make that matchup. Um, for whatever reason that would, he said that he don't think that would be a good fight for Penovacoff. So with that being said, that was thrown out there already that he wouldn't want to take that fight. This, this article was just put out about uh, three weeks ago, actually, and um, it said Freddie Roach wouldn't want to take that fight, so they put that out there. I mean, but I would definitely like to fight a Penovacoff. I seem, um, I, I, I'd be the guy that um, that beat him, you know what I mean? Um, and um, he was on Styles, like I said, Styles been fights. But um, the style that Herrera beat him with is actually a style that I beat Herrera with. And um, and uh, and I'm definitely uh, uh, capable of um, um, implementing that same style, but with a lot more power. And finally, my last question before uh, Ness jumps back in. Your stable mate and Gulo goes this Saturday. What's your prediction for that fight? Um, I see him being an explosive fight. Um, Angulo has got a lot of good sharp guys in there. Um, Tony Hurst, uh, Daniel Livingston, um, Antonio Johnson. Um, he actually got in there with Kier, um, um, Khan at times. And, uh, I mean, overall, he got some good work in there. Um, you know, a mix of speed, power, and um, big guys and everything. And I see, um, you know, he was able to catch up with Laura, and Laura was a, is, was a pure boxer. And, I don't see Canelo being a pure box like that. I think Canelo want to sit down and 
you know, trade punches with him, and I think that's where that would be the uh, reason for his demise. Well, Kareem, uh, <clears throat> we want to thank you for taking the time out to give us this interview. And uh, we also want to let you know that on the Boxing Voice rankings, you're ranked at number six above Jesse Vargas and Khabib and Herrera and a bunch of other people. So, uh, you know, we wish you the best in the Thomas Lorme fight. Vic will be out there for that one, and uh, we hope to get a video interview with you. Uh, definitely, man. I want to say uh, you guys actually, like, uh, uh, it's a, I mean, it's about 100 websites and different blogs and sites and everything I love and everything, excuse me, but I want everything. Y'all, like, the, the, y'all my top, probably uh, definitely my top two. I mean, for one, you guys ask the, the, the good questions, not the same questions that everybody's asking. And you guys, uh, I don't know, it's just, First of all, when the way you ask the questions, it's funny sometimes from watching you and like you ask questions that people don't expect you to hit them with, and you guys um ask good questions. So uh, man, keep doing your thing, man, and uh, success to all of y'all. Well, thank you very much, man. It means a lot. Always coming from one of you guys, the fighters. Perfect. Thanks. Thanks for having me. All right. <laughs>